You all right? My name's Paul. I've got autism and I make random videos based on my version of autism and the way my head works. And I stick the videos on the internet in case you want to watch them or listen to them um, on the podcast. But what I will say to those who just listen on the podcast is I don't upload all the audio from all the videos on the podcast platforms. So, you know, nip over to YouTube, have a nosy, see what other nonsense and waffling on the videos that you miss. Um, I haven't done a video for a while. Uh, for several reasons, and one of them is I just haven't felt motivated to do so, and that will be the topic of the video. Um, not thought about it, but you know, it has been asked for several times, and I've never thought to myself I've got I've got a good way of trying to uh, discuss motivation because I never feel motivated. I don't know what it is, but I also think I'm not doing myself any justice there either. So um, we'll talk about it, but I'll just give you. For those who like me and my waffle, um, I'll just do a little update. Um, not that they're ever little, to be honest, but um, what's been going on? So I think I mentioned in one of the videos that I did last that I've got to pay a fortune for a repair on the car. Well, I've pulled the trigger and uh, walked into the garage and said, you're just going to have to do it. You know, you're going to have to fix this valve thing, just get it ordered up. And he was like, oh, why has the engine light come back on? I'm like, no, but I can't be traveling up and down the motorway, you know, with poo in my pants, dreading the fact that it might just blow up or whatever it might do. I didn't pay attention to that bit. I just knew my car might not work. And that is the anxiety. That's the fear. That's the autism. I don't want to be far away from home ever. You know, the, the garden path, if I get to the end of that, that's far enough. I don't want to venture far and then I'm in the car for three and a half hours one way and I just thought knowing my luck I'll end up on one of these tiny roads up in North Cumbria and my car will just stop working you know and that sort of fear was just in my head every day and I thought I'm gonna to have to pay for this repair anyway at some point so just do it now um so the car's going in on the 26th um and I'm gonna get absolutely battered to uh well my wallet is uh, to pay for that. So great stuff. Uh, so the car, hopefully after that date will be safe and, um, then I won't be able to afford fuel for it. So great stuff. Uh, what else? Um, someone has disappeared. Um, so one of the curses of doing this is some people just disappear. Um, so people in emails, um, you know, they will ask a ton of advice. They will talk to you a lot. And then once they've sort of had the fill, they just flirt off, you know, and that leaves me wondering, are they dead? I hope they're all right, you know? <laughs> like I, I'm a great believer in if you need to part ways with someone, just be amicable and just go, I don't think we can be friends anymore. You know, I, I just think it'd be a waste of time because you're after something I'm not and uh, we're just not compatible in that way anymore. So I'm going to go. But, you know, if we pass each other in the street, I'll always salute you. Um, and jobs are good. And but, you know, people just disappear. So I've lost another one uh, over the past couple of weeks. And um, I just hope they're all right. Um and that they've just been rude and decided to not talk to me anymore. Um, I've also decided to buy some weights. <laughs> so I don't know if I mentioned that there was this really good deal on in Aldi uh, for these free weights. Um, I bought them and long story short, they got cancelled. And it really annoyed me because out of everyone on earth who has to have their order cancelled, it is always me. I was the kid who had his name missed off school registers or his surnames always spelt wrong or whatever. So it just made sense that I was the person who didn't get his order. But I still wanted some free weights because I'd gone and bought a bench to, uh, <clears throat> you know, to sit my backside on and what have you while I mess about with them. So expensive. Honestly, if you don't know the price of free weights, just have a look online and you will be wondering why it's so expensive to buy free weights when you could buy a bag of sand for like five quid 
<laughs> and it does the same thing. Um, and I know I could have bought a bag of sand, but I do want them in a more compact, handheld way of dealing with them. Um, so they should be here in the next three to five working days. And then I've got to make space in the garage, which there isn't any space. But all of that's going to have to wait because I have damaged my knee. Don't know how. I really don't. I was playing with the dog in the garden. Uh, George is all right. I'll just tell you that as well. He's um, an adolescent now. He's a little young lad. And he's just full of life. He's just full of testosterone. And he can never settle. And always wants to... Well, I've got a nickname for him, but I can't share it on here because it's swearing. But basically, he's a pea-sniffling pig. So when we're outside walking, he's constantly got his nose to the floor trying to find any pea to sniff and lick. He's a little tramp. And his face is so close to the floor, he's just snuffling all the time like I'm taking a pig for a walk. Um, but yeah, uh, what was I going to say about him? Yeah, I was, so I was playing with him in the garden. All was well after the play. I come in, sit down, whatever, and then my knee just started to hurt. So two weeks on, it still kills. And I've no idea what I've done, but it's just on the inside of my right knee. So I can't row. So the weight's coming back on. Um, but it's going to have to wait, isn't it? Um, until I get the weights and the knee repairs, if it can repair, because knowing my luck, I'll have uh, eroded my discs and uh, kneecaps and my leg will have to be chopped off. Who knows? But yeah, that's not fun. And the last thing I'll mention, and this is weird, but it's, again, it's quite tied into the topic, is I've started writing a film. It'll never see the light of day, but it will get made. Um, so basically, me and my old friend Baz, who have mentioned countless times across these videos. He's back up north now in, uh, in the northeast, where he's originally from. And there is this music cottage in Scotland, which is in the middle of nowhere. You can be as loud as you want. No one hears you. So we're thinking of going up there for five days, maybe do a bit of music, but we're also going to film a film because that was always something we used to be really into. So I mentioned it to him. Should we do a film finally? You know, it, it doesn't matter what it's about. Let's just do one. It doesn't matter how stupid it is. It'll just be good to have on record that we did something daft. And I get to stick on my, you know, I'm always masking anyway. I'm always pretending. So why can't I pretend in a film? But I can actually be real at pretending. <laughs> like I'll actually be following a script and have a character. And uh, he was well up for it. So wicked that's happening so it's kind of given me a bit more yeah you know i feel a bit more motivated now for for that which has brought me out of a little funk uh but not that anyone asked but the premise is like a premise of a z list film so basically because this house is in the middle of nowhere it's going to be about two hitmen sent to kill each other but they don't know it's going to be serious as well, you know. It's not just going to be a stu as stupid as the uh, the premise makes out, but you know they're both going to have to realise that the person they're there to kill is actually the other person. So then they're going to be wondering why somebody has actually ordered the hit and what would have happened if they'd never have found out. You know what would have happened if one would have shown up, killed the other, and cracked on. You know were they then destined to you know end up on the chopping block as well and. It, sort of the film is about them trying to unpick that and the two very different people. Um, one of them's an intelligent psychopath, the other one's ex-army. Again, fully Z-list premise, but that's the point. It's to do something silly. No? And uh, I'll obviously be one of the hitmen, and so will he. And it's just fun. It's good to be stupid. It's good to have silly little things to enjoy because... Where else are you going to get them? You know, look at what's still happening in Ukraine and Russia. No fun there, kids. Um, but what we'll say about that, I know I'm 10 minutes in, but what I will say about that is I was asked this week by someone I work with, would I take in a Ukrainian family? Because in the UK, we're, they're being offered like 350 quid a month to take them in. It's like, no, I wouldn't. Oh, why not? You know, you've got a big house, haven't you? It's like, well... I've got more bedrooms than I need to sleep in, but I'm also autistic. I, this is also my postage stamp on the, all of this earth. 
where it's just for me. I don't let people come here, let alone people who can't speak my language. And I'll have to, I don't know, would I have to look after them? Would I have to feed them? I would have let them know not to, you know, be cooking potatoes at three in the morning. How do you No was the answer anyway. So um, interesting that one came up. But let's get into the topic because you not always, not all of you are always here to listen to me waffle. So motivation. How do you find it? How do you get it? So this week, I've had all the air knocked out of me because, hmm, how to say it? All right, I'm just going to put my pen down. That's how serious I am. I'm putting the pen down because I feel like I need to use my hands to talk to you. So, <laughs> I... When I got my new boss, he gave me, he made this decision at the beginning of the year to give us all work in a six month batch. So make sure you hit all these buildings, do all the work that's needed in these, these six months, which was fine. It was a doable plan, but because I'm the only one who does stayovers, I have to sleep over to the area because it's in the middle of nowhere. I can't be making three and a half, four hour trips one way and then doing a day's work and then driving back on that. That's nonsensical. So I said, basically, the, the plan was in no order. He just said, these are the buildings that are next. So, all right. So I, I got on the phone with him after the meeting and said, would I be all right rearranging some of these dates? Because I've got one building in January, one in March, one in May, and these three buildings are next door to each other. So can I move them around to make it a bit more cost effective, a bit more pragmatic? If I'm already there, I might as well walk next door and do the next one if they're small buildings. And his words to me were, yes, yes, you can. That's not a problem. So long as they're done within those six months, the order isn't very important. So long as they all get done. And what I'll need you to do is update your planner and send it back to the guy who gave us the, um, the planner in the first place. And I said, not a problem. So whereas most people are booking the work in, like assessment to assessment, day by day, audit to audit, I decided I was going to book the entire six months, which to me makes sense because I know where I'm going, I know what I'm doing. So I did, and I reached out to every single manager who would need to meet me on the days. Now, some came back quicker than others. Some of them were on holiday. Some of them were actually off on long-term sick. Some of them had left the company. I didn't know. I don't know them that well to be able to know these things. So whoever came back first got first dibs on me and my time, and it allowed me to then sequentially book my time in. And I then created an Excel sheet. I started making a plan of all the places that were booked and when they were booked, even a couple of columns to say whether it was booked or complete. And I did all that. And then I took that form when every building was booked and I sent it to the person my boss asked me to. And then on Monday this week, my boss phones me and says, basically out the blue, uh, by the way, you're going to be working under a different manager as of the 4th of April. So where's my consultation? Where's my, you know, we're just keeping you in the, in the loop, Paul, for this. You know, this might be what's happening, which is what he agreed. Uh, he was going to try and, you know, communicate with me of things involving me. So that completely went out the window. He just told me I'm going to be working under a new manager. Um, he's still going to be the overall manager, but I'm going to report to someone else. Um, and why hadn't I done a certain building that was written down for February? So I told him what he told me. So long as they're done within the six months, it's all right. And update someone and jobs are good. And, and he went pretty, he got pretty angry. I was like, no, 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 I didn't say that. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And the reason you did is because you speak to a lot of people in a day. You have several meetings a day across several different departments, different departments all the time. In my work, I speak to my boss for direction. That's it. I don't create my own plan because I want to be part of a team that has all its plan in place. So what I say in the Northwest, the same person will say in Scotland, the same the person will say in the Southwest, 
I'm a fan of that. I created a, a document on OneNote for simplistic uh, general fire risk assessment answers to help people along the way to try and show that we can demonstrate a very similar working process with our answers. So I'm the fan of that. I don't just create and make stuff up myself, but he seems to think he never told me that. So I lost all my motivation because I was basically being told that I was wrong, that it was somehow now my fault because I had done as under his request, I did exactly what I was allowed to do, but he says he didn't say that. Um, and the person who I meant to send the document to to get updated, he didn't update it. Now, that's not my fault. But my boss said, well, if you noticed he hadn't updated it, you should have emailed him again. No, I shouldn't. And I said, no, I shouldn't. No, I should not. Why should I chase somebody else if they don't do their job? I'm not their manager. I'm not their supervisor. If they choose not to do work, that's not my problem. But I've got a record of where I'm going, what I'm doing under your instruction that you allowed me to do. I'm not the one who's wrong here. If you're stressed, if you're feeling the pinch, if people are you know, coming down on you, wanting more from you, that's also not my concern. All I care about is the instruction you gave me that I followed. And what that's done, and we all know I'm not a fan of working where I work because I feel let down from the autism assessment. All week I have felt very, very flat. Like I went and worked away on Wednesday, no, Tuesday night. And I was driving towards where I was staying and I just took a diversion and I went somewhere that I've not been for a while because I just couldn't go and sit in that room waiting for the next day to come around. I just felt like I was wasting life because I don't want to be where I am. I don't mind doing what I do, but that's the problem. You know, when I, when I leave an employment, I'm leaving my employer and I go and do the same job elsewhere. Now, that should be a red flag to, to companies and say, why do staff want to leave? Why, why, why can't we keep them happy? You know, it's, it's an odd thing. But what I'm trying to say is I didn't have and I haven't had the motivation. Which has got me thinking about the motivation because... As I film this, it's Thursday evening, uh, the 17th of March. And I struggle with mood. I struggle with my low mood. I struggle with trying to find the interesting things to try and get me out of bed and get me doing things. And it's getting motivated to do things. And sometimes the, re like the reason I've tried to book my work in a, in a six-month window is so I can, on that front, turn my mind onto autopilot. So I don't need motivation to get up and get out. It just becomes nature, and I can just do it. Whereas if I had to plan each and every one, every time I was doing it, I'd be riddled with anxiety. Because in my opinion, more things can go wrong. What if somebody is not available, you know? But how can I now stay motivated to do the job I do that I don't want to do anymore. But for the company, I don't want to work for. And the reason I don't want to work for them, the reason it keeps knocking me down is because I'm the one who gets let down. Other people don't get let down. I do. I try my hardest to be the best for everyone. And I'm the one who always gets let down. And I have to keep having a word with myself saying, Paul, pack it in. People don't care. Your interest and your passion would have been great in the 80s. <laughs> it would have been great in the 90s. But now you're just a, a number. But you're a, you're a very dispensable number and people don't care. There isn't care in business anymore. You know, there was something on LinkedIn uh, where somebody was kicking off because they're saying that they shouldn't have to include a salary in a job description when they're advertising a role. Of course you should. Where is, your, where is an employee's motivation to come and work for you if they don't know why they're coming? There can't be employers out there that dense that they believe people want to work for that company. 
Why do they want to work for that company? Because they're paying well. Great. I want to work for you now. That's it. People want to pay for their life. They don't want to you know, pay with their life by giving everything they've got to a workplace. That isn't going to pay them properly. That's not right. And for me, if a company is hiding the salary, then they're obviously not very, you know, if they're trying to negotiate to bring you in on a lower scale, it means they don't respect the work you do. You know, and I, I'm, sl- I, I just feel like another thing that happened in work is we have this Facebook for work and um, the health and safety manager who I've got a lot of time for, he just put something simple in a in an in a in an email saying to basically start using this Facebook for work thing where we would like maybe take a picture of someone we're working with to try and promote um working relationships. But I don't want to do that. That would then have me on high alert, have me anxious to somehow try and find a window where I'm meant to talk about something very, very serious, talk about all these things that are wrong, tell them a thousand ways to fix it, try and show them a history of how something has failed, and then go, but before I go, can we have a cheesy picture together? You know, a picture that I don't like. I hate having my picture taken. And one of the ironic reasons that all my thumbnails are a picture of me, it's to highlight that artistic people generally don't like having the picture taken. That was done on purpose. I can't be posing for pictures for work to then have to think of something, pretend to write. Great day out today with Margaret. Loved, loved the cup of tea and the biscuit because that's what they're ultimately after. They're after this faux happiness, whereas I would much rather use that five minutes to carry on talking to the person and tell them why things are wrong and the best ways to try and fix it. So because I'm sort of having that moment taken away where I've somehow got to now be a a cringe-worthy person, you know, because that was the email was basically saying we want you all to use it. I look forward to seeing you all put something up there in the next few months. And I know what's going to happen. If I'm still here in a few months, I'm going to get a text, a call, and our team's thing saying, notice you haven't put anything up yet. Can you get around to it soon? And it's another one of those things where it's another one of those very, very simple, low, you know, low skill, obvious, no stress tasks for other people. It's a, a break in the day, something joyful and easy for someone to do, but not For me, it then becomes my everything. I would rather work a weekend for free than do that for five minutes because it's cringe. It's personal. Talking to someone, say, can we pose for a picture? Can I tag you in something? So it removes motivation. And I know I've talked too much about nothing, but what I'm trying to get at, what what I know I'm trying to get at is Your motivation depends on everything else. You can have all the greatest will and intention in the world to get up in the morning. I'm going to get up for 5 a.m. I'm going to work out for an hour. I'm going to have a shower. I'm going to have a healthy breakfast. I'm going to make sure I do this, make sure I do that. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, and then I'm going to read the news. And you read the news and it's like, you know, lots more people have just been needlessly killed by someone in Saudi Arabia, in Ukraine. And it's like motivation, bang, it gets a punch in the face and you're like, oh, okay. That makes me feel like crap. You know, you turn your work computer on and you're about to tackle your emails and there's an email saying, by the way, I want you to start using this Facebook for work and pose with people and promote uh, relationships across other departments. Bang, that is another punch to the uh, motivation because that's not who you are. Something else that happened, I tried to get two hours a week of professional reading time because I, I have got a course I want to do. And from the 13th of May last year, I put these two hours in and I didn't get to take two minutes of that once in about eight months. And you know what I did? I just went, forget it. And I just removed it from the diary. Someone else in my team was given every Wednesday to do a course. 
How's that fair? It isn't. So what does that do? Bang! Again, another punch to the motivation. You get battered for that. You know, being told you can do something by your employer, your manager, who you went for for the advice, and they then say, I never said that. Batter. There's another one. So my motivation is on its backside because I feel unfairly treated. I don't feel listened to. I feel like I get so far on this climb in trying to make my employees, you know, people I work with understand my autism for the areas they need. And because it's not on their mind 24-7, and nor should it be, but something as simple as a request. You know, I'm sure if I speak to Mark, he'll fully understand because he is a really nice guy. But it's those fights you have with yourself before you do because I I don't know how other people feel, but I always feel like I can't just always. Any little thing that pops up, it feels like I'm the bad guy. I'm the one who throws his hand in the air and goes, yeah, by the way, I can't do that because... and it. It feels like you only ever raise the negative and you can't focus on the positive. So my, my motivation comes from my surroundings. And obviously with, like I say, bad news, unfair uh, treatment across the team, take your pictures, I never said that. You know, there's bang, 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 bang. There's all these punches to the motivation. So if I was doing that, you know, proverbial get up at 5 a.m., work out for an hour, healthy breakfast, blah, blah, blah. When my alarm goes off the next day, I won't have the motivation because it's been beaten. My motivation is dependent more on my surroundings and everything else than it is on me and my inner working because I have to stay so dialed in and tuned in to everybody else to blend in and break even. So because I'm paying more attention to everybody else, how they treat me depends on whether I have motivation or not. So my motivation for work, interest in working out, you know, my knee is knackered, told you that, but I'm not actually too down about that. That's just pain. It will go hopefully soon, even though it's been two weeks. But it's how you get treated and how you can't lift yourself. That's the problem. But then I talked to my friend Baz. I throw him, pitch him the idea very softly, you know, like, come on, man, we used to like, you know, thinking of movie ideas when we used to work together and stuff. How about even though we're older now, that we still maybe do something? And he was all for it. So my motivation might have been punched a few times, but now it's been lifted up by someone who actually cares. So the people who care are a massive influence on my motivation. When I get a nice comment from someone when I'm feeling flat, it picks me up. But don't get me wrong, I then feel bad if, like, someone uh, deleted a comment because I didn't respond fast enough, I guess. Um, and that made me feel really bad for not being able to get back to them quick enough. You know, and it was, um, it was based off the last video to do a test, and they want me to do another test. And I will do that test um, that you asked for, the Myers Briggs one. Um, but I felt bad I didn't get back in time because I don't always have time to respond to all the. Comments or emails, you know, but um, I hope it, I hope I didn't punch your punch you in your motivation uh, for you <laughs> to uh, have to delete that. But that's what I'm trying to get at: is my motivation is very much determined on how others treat me. If I feel I'm fairly treated, if I feel I'm listened to, then I feel a bit more relaxed, and it allows my natural state to come out a bit more. And it, if I feel like I'm being considered, I want to repay that, and so to repay that gives me the motivation to want to do it. Um, so my motivation is driven by others. I really don't think this would have helped anyone, but I know I waffled far too much. Um, I hope it made sense, and I hope you you know what I was trying to say. Um, but if not, I apologize, because uh, I've wasted half an hour of your time. But until next time, thanks for watching, and keep smiling.